Six Atomic is a technology company focused within the apparel industry. Our goal is to build a real-time fashion supply chain so that products can be brought from design through to production within a few seconds. To make this possible, you need lots of automation, and that's the technology we're building. So let's look at the real-time value chain we enable with our technology. At the beginning of the process, you have design and merchandising. It's a very similar process to how brands typically develop new designs, just more automated. You can take the base size pattern, upload it to synthesis, and then it can automatically grade to all the sizes that you need, create the 3D simulation and all the other assets that's required to make it. You can also use a modular design approach if you're selling more standardized products like t-shirts, jeans, trousers and shirts, where you can mix and match design components to create new styles. So if you have decades of designs and you want to consolidate all of those design variations into a modular library, that's another possibility within design and merchandising. Once the design is created, we also assist with that product in store. We have an ability to capture measurements for size recommendation or to create custom fitting garments. We can also integrate with different measurement capture solutions and also work with Configurator in case you want the customer to customize the look and feel of the garment, and then that would go into production. Some examples of assets we produce for production include a marker for cutting machines or a script to control an automated sewing machine to adjust the jigs automatically in production. And then, right at the end, because this entire value chain is digital, we're able to optimize where something's potentially going really well and make more of it, or where something's going wrong and fix it. So let's focus a bit on this design and merchandising step. So we all know the traditional product development approach. A designer typically sketches a product and a patent is developed. Some companies use 3D simulation for sampling. And finally, the base pattern is graded to other sizes. This is not a revolutionary method. This is the way products have been created for a very long time. What we're trying to do here is improve that process. We just want to make that a lot faster than it is. We call this a smart traditional approach. You upload a pattern. It could be a single pattern for a single style, or you can upload multiple patterns for the same style. If you plan to have a modular design library, uploaded patterns go through a piece and entity detection process. We can apply grading models automatically to pieces. And in a similar way, because we've detected and classified each piece, we're able to apply the 3D simulation models as well. So here's an example. I'm taking three different patterns. When I upload these three patterns, the system automatically detects each of the pieces from each of the files. We pass the DXF to JSON, which we then feed into a detection model for classification. The interface also allows to correct any misclassifications. Once we've completed the classification results, we can review the modular hierarchy. The modular hierarchy is built by identifying common components so that they can be mixed and matched to create new unique styles. So we had three different source patterns. We were able to identify the bodice patterns, collar, band, cuff, sleeve and pocket components. Now I can generate the DXF of my new combined style. What this is demonstrating is that you can mix and match patterns from different sources, different base sizes, and compile a unique style where everything is graded to fit together perfectly. In a similar way to how we can automatically grade, we can also automatically create a 3D simulation. The JSON file has all the 3D simulation metadata included within it. The JSON schema can also support different avatar dimensions, as well as textures and physics for materials so you can create an almost photorealistic rendering automatically. Moving on, we're also able to support modular product design workflows. This is where within one library, one resource, you're able to create millions of SKUs. This works very well for staple wear products like polos, jeans, trousers, and t-shirts. This is because products change very little from season to season, so pre-configured options are practical. Modular design allows you to easily mix and match variants to create new styles without needing a pattern. It is also valuable if you're interested in using AI design, because AI designers could look at what's trending 
and then use the modular design backend just like this to create a new style without having to go through deep pattern development process. So it's a simple interface like this where you could just pick the features that you want in that particular style. So let's talk about what inputs are required for our system. The first thing we need is a measurement specification. This can be hand measurements, however, most likely it will be garment sizing specifications. So you'll input something like a grading table or a size spec. We can also support body scanner inputs if you're using something like that. Next, we need the design data. So if there are any modular variations, that's an input. For manufacturing, we'll need the shrinkage properties and material dimensions. And for 3D simulations, we'll need texture and physics information for accurate rendering. We also need manufacturer requirements for production. From these inputs, the system will return a manufacturing asset or merchandising asset like the 3D simulation we talked about earlier. So how does this work? Basically, we use code and algorithms. We take these inputs, run some calculations, and generate the outputs. There's no humans involved in this process. Let me use this example here. We've got a piece of geometry. This geometry happens to be a yoke from a shirt. This right now is a finished object, but for us, we see a piece of geometry with layers of logic embedded within it, logic that we can decipher. We identify the shape of its features and use those properties to map it to a grading or 3D simulation model. So now if I want to change the neckline, we can apply a model to automatically grade the neckline to a new target. 3D stitching configurations work the same way. If we detect the yoke, we know what pieces it needs to stitch to and where those pieces belong on the body. All of this metadata is baked into the yoke piece itself so that we can automate all these steps rather than continually doing it manually time and time again. And then of course it goes into production and then right at the end we've got an opportunity to optimize over time using data collected throughout the value chain. So that's a brief introduction to Six Atomic. We're happy to discuss these areas in further detail and potentially start working on some groundbreaking projects together.